What's going on y'all, Attorney Tom here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the legal reasons why Queen Elizabeth decided to strip Prince Andrew of his titles. Now, in case you don't know, Prince Andrew is being sued civilly for SA. And I apologize for using acronyms. I don't want YouTube to remove this video. Prince Andrew is being sued for SA. And uh, about a week ago, a judge ruled that the case could move forward. Prince Andrew originally made an argument that the court didn't have jurisdiction in. He said, hey, before we even get into the merits of this case, we first need to establish if a case can go forward. And my position, or I should say Prince Andrew's position is absolutely not. I'm not a citizen of the United States. I didn't avail myself to the jurisdiction of the United States. I am quite literally a royal of another company. Company country i'm a royal of another country well the judge did not buy that argument the day after the judge ruled that the case could go forward queen elizabeth stripped prince andrew of his royal titles and military titles now you might be thinking yeah well of course she did that because sa is nothing to mess with and clearly if he was doing that he might be a piece of shit and might not be worthy of having those titles but there's also a financial reason for this as well. So here's a statement from the official Royal Family Twitter account regarding Prince Andrew. With the Queen's approval and agreement, the Duke of York's military affiliations and royal patronages have returned to the Queen. The Duke of York will continue not to undertake any public duties and is defending this case as a private citizen. Private citizen is probably the most important words in that entire statement now i see a lot of people on the internet who have no idea what they're talking about and they're borderline a little bit weird they're weirdos getting all hyped up for this trial like yeah we're gonna get him you know and i and i get that to an extent but if you are prince andrew's lawyers what do y'all think the best course of action is and i want you to take five seconds to guess below in the comments if you were Prince Andrew, the best thing to do is nothing. Ignore it. Nothing. Zilch. Don't show up. Don't respond. Don't do anything. You are a royal, or I guess former royal of another country, and this is a civil suit. So nobody's going to go to jail. The only thing that they can recover is money damages. And by participating in this case, things can only get worse for you, especially if you're an alleged piece of shit, which yeah you know uh, we're not gonna go there because this video is not about that so here's the deal if you are prince andrew or his legal team you are telling him look prince andrew we are going to ignore this suit we are not going to participate we are going to let them get a default judgment against us and so what happens when you get a default judgment is they can seize your assets so let's just say the default judgment is for a hundred million dollars and that's a totally baseless number i have no idea it could be 10 million dollars could be a billion dollars i don't know a hundred million dollar default judgment so after the plaintiff gets her default judgment for a hundred million dollars she's going to go find a hundred million dollars worth of assets that she can seize to compensate her for her default judgment so then it becomes a matter of what assets she can seize so it's going to be property or other assets that are in the united states jurisdiction that prince andrew has some sort of claim to now being the son of the queen you might presume that he has some sort of claim to all of the assets that the royal family owns inside of the united states and on top of that when you're dealing with royal families especially royal families who have been instilled or been in power for over 100 years you are going to have assets that are part of the royal family and their official duties which maybe would be exempt from any sort of asset seizure but you better damn well assume that they have some private assets as well to protect their family's generational wealth in the event of them losing their spot on the throne so I did a quick Google search. This was the very first thing that popped up. I have no idea if it's true. I have no way to authenticate it, but you know, 
I'm just giving you an example. I assume if this is not true, that there are other pieces of property or assets that they do own in the United States. Again, this is just me assuming things. So take it with a grain of salt. But the question is, how much land does the British royal family own in the United States? The Queen owns private land in the United States and Canada, though not in her capacity as a sovereign of the United Kingdom. Okay, so this is her acting in a private capacity, which probably makes the assets easier to seize. She owns a horse farm in Kentucky and is believed to own Prime Park Avenue estate in New York City. Details of ownership will never be confirmed or denied by the palace. Also may not even known by her majesty herself since much of her personal wealth is held in what is known as a blind trust. So let's assume Queen Elizabeth does have some assets in the United States that is owned outside of her capacity as the queen. If I were her trying to build generational wealth, I would add my heirs to the titles of that as well. So essentially they would own these assets in a joint venture. Or maybe it's more specific to say that they might own the assets in a joint ownership. So essentially Queen Elizabeth buys the property. She puts the name of Prince Andrew or the other heirs to the throne on the title as well. So they can all share in the appreciation of the assets. So what I imagine Queen Elizabeth's fear is that this plaintiff gets a default judgment. She takes over Prince Andrew's portion of the asset and forces a sale of that asset so she can get paid. Now, if you're Queen Elizabeth and you see the writing on the wall, what is the best thing to do to protect your family's assets? It's to kick Prince Andrew out of the family. I anticipate that in the agreements that Queen Elizabeth has with her heirs, it has some sort of clause saying, hey, listen, if you ever get kicked out of the royal family, you, you, you lose privilege to all of the assets that I have given you joint ownership of. So I apologize for being cynical. I just think that Queen Elizabeth stripping Prince Andrew the day after the judge rules that this case can go forward is no coincidence. In fact, I think it was probably strategic. Why didn't she strip Prince Andrew of the titles when these accusations came out? And y'all, I'm not trying to get into the controversy or the drama or the conspiracy theories. I'm just trying to teach y'all how to think like a lawyer. Oh my God, that's legal eagles line. Sorry, Devin. But, but yeah, I mean, when things like this happen, there's often some sort of legal strategic value to them, especially when you're operating with such a highly wealthy, highly wealthy, a very wealthy and important family like the royal family. All right, y'all, that's it for today's video. Talk to you later. He's a catastrophic injury attorney who accidentally became a YouTuber. Attorney Tom.